All right. So we are recording. So yeah, thank you all again for joining. I really appreciate you talking to us. Um, yeah, like Troy mentioned, our goal is to um, just introduce students to different sustainability careers. Obviously, this one is food system sustainability. Um, so we're just really excited that you guys have agreed to have a conversation with us. Um, so I have a couple questions. Um, our first one is just some quick intros, your name, if you want to share your pronouns, um, your Morris grad year, and then your majors and minors, your current job title, and basically like how your work um, relates to sustainability and food systems. And that's kind of a lot of stuff. So if you need me to repeat at any point, I can definitely do that. Um, I forgot to introduce myself. I think I'm Tor. I'm the event planning and outreach um, intern for the Morris Office of Sustainability. I use she, they pronouns. Yeah, whoever wants to go first. Who's, who's the oldest here? We can go in age order. Brian. It's probably me. <clears throat> All right, go uh, I'm, ahead. Yeah, I'm, well, thanks, Tor. <clears throat> And thanks for inviting me. Uh, I graduated in 2003. Uh, I was a biology major, chemistry minor. And I am a professional goat wrangler. Um, so I have a goat grazing service that I bring my goats around and eat people's buckthorn, uh, control invasive species. Uh, but um that's more of a recent uh role that i've taken on i have been operating lakeside prairie farm for the last 10 years we were grazing grass-fed beef and vegetables we had a csa for a while we did farmers markets we did uh, pigs and wheat and oats and chickens so we, we've done a lot of um a lot of different things here, but we've settled on the goat grazing service. Um, yeah, what else is on the list here? Um, um, I think you got it all for the first question. Um, yeah. yeah, and then, yeah, obviously we'll have more questions. So yeah, whoever wants to go next. I can go next. Um, so hi everybody. Yeah, thanks so much for the invite tour. It's uh, great to be here and sharing a virtual space with everybody. Um, so my name is Natasha Myhall. I use um, she, her pronouns. Um, I'm a citizen of the Sault Ste. Marie tribe of Chippewa Indians um, from the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. I graduated from Morris in 2015 um, with a double major in American Indian Studies and Environmental Studies. Uh, my current job title is an assistant professor of Indigenous Environmental Studies at Ohio State. Um, and my work broadly looks, um, I would say it's probably leaning more towards sustainability right now than food systems. So I work with um, tribes in the Great Lakes to um, understand how their restoration programs, specifically right now I'm working specifically on fish, um, how they're adapting and kind of responding to the changing climate. Um, so that's broadly how like my research intersects with how <clears throat> we think our, or tribes are envisioning um, what sustainability might look like in the future. And then um, related to that, I'm really interested in how people themselves are experiencing climate change. So I do a lot of um, interviews and sort of um, talking with folks just to get their understandings of how the landscapes they've been, um, you know, living on their whole lives have have experienced changed and then um, thinking through how, you know, one might address those changes in the future. So um, I'll stop there. And I'm Katie Letterman. I graduated in 2017 from Morris with a double major in environmental studies and management. Um, I'm currently a second grade teacher 
And my husband and I also own a small vineyard and winery outside of Alexandria. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Um, so our next question is, did you always know what you wanted to do? And then how did you choose your major and your um, career path? And I found that it's usually easiest to go in the same order. So, um, Brian, if you're okay starting. Yeah, so I didn't know what I was going to do. It wasn't until graduate school that it really figured out I wanted to farm, but um, so I was just like, we didn't have environmental studies. It, it, the, that wasn't offered at Morris when I was there. It was just biology and chemistry. There, there was a lot of pre-med students, but um, I got in along the set along the path that I uh, went down. It, it started, I think, mostly at Morris. My senior seminar project, I did some volunteer work with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, uh, do, uh, learning about the prairie. Do, and so it was about uh, inventorying prairie plant species on fish and wildlife uh, possible. So um, in Morris. And so that I fell in love with the prairie and then that kind of got me got me started on this path that I made. So. Yeah, um, so I think my um, my response is a little bit similar to Brian's. I don't think I always knew what I wanted to do exactly um, until I also got to graduate school. Um, so I, I also didn't start off as an environmental studies um, major at Morris. Um, it wasn't until I took, um, I think it was called at the time, Introduction to Environmental Problems and Policy with Ed Brands, and I was taking um, Introduction to American Indian Studies uh, the same semester that I saw a lot of intersections between both those classes. And then after that, um, I declared both of those as my major and kind of things like took off from there. Um, yeah, I think, you know, in grad school, um, and I have to really give a lot of kudos to, um, you know, research opportunities being a part of the conversation of my education at Morris, that I had a little bit of an idea of like what I wanted to continue in graduate school. Um, so I was really grateful for, you know, conversations around research, encouraging students, um, you know, while we were at Morris to apply for research opportunities. Um, so once I got to graduate school, you know, I had an idea of what I wanted to do because I had that experience at Morris. And so I um, originally started off on the path of um, ethnobotany, which is the medicinal and cultural use of plants by um, different groups of peoples. I was looking specifically um, at native people's use of a plant called osha or bear root. And so started off like a master's along those lines and then eventually kind of um, shifted my focus to um, issues around tribal natural resource management in the Great Lakes for a PhD. So I think, you know, my interests kind of shifted, but have always stayed um, around like the lens of indigenous peoples and environmental issues. Okay, um, <laughs> trying to think of how to describe my story. My dad was an environmental educator, still is. Um, and so I did always know I wanted to do something in something sustainability or environmental education. And I did not want to go to Morris, <laughs> but I toured, I think, over 25 colleges. And I wanted to travel out west. I was a big, like, really into the mountains, wanted to adventure. And when it came down to it, I couldn't afford any of those colleges. Um, and I got a great scholarship from Morris. And then when I came on to campus to tour, I met Troy and learned about the Office of Sustainability and just all the stuff that they were doing on campus for sustainability. Um, and that's what sold me. So, well, and the good value. Um, 
but that's how I decided. I mean, I already, so I already knew coming into Morris that I wanted to do um, environmental something and I wanted to be an environmental studies major. Um, and then my dad gave me the advice because he was seeing all these environmental um, studies or environmental science majors graduate and there wasn't a ton of job opportunities at the time. And so he encouraged me to get a double major in something else that I was interested in. Um, and I had always been interested in business a bit too. And so I decided to do management. And then um, throughout my time at Morris, I was just, I did a bunch of different opportunities really through, through Ed Brands and the environmental studies major, also through the Office of Sustainability. So I got a bunch of different experiences in different types of environmental work and sustainability. Um, and I still didn't really know what I wanted to do when I graduated, but also throughout my time in Morris, I, um, well, I met my now husband and we started helping my grandpa at this vineyard and winery. So my grandpa is the one who started it. Um, and so we started helping out because we weren't that far away in Morris. And I just knew I loved being outside and working with um, food. I was also in the organic gardening club at Morris and was really finding passion with growing food and talking about local food products. And so then when I could make the connection between um, the vineyard and growing your own local food product, um, wine in Minnesota, I thought that was really cool. So uh, I'm trying to think if I answered that question, but that, I was a really roundabout way of getting there. And we didn't start at the winery right after graduation, but um, I think I answered the question. Yes, you did. So yeah, thank you guys. Um, our next question is, uh, did you participate in any research internships or jobs to help you prepare for your career? Sure, yeah, I did. Um... After my undergrad, I worked for a researcher studying butterflies at the Glacial Lake State Park. Um, and then that was just for a couple months during that summer after I graduated. Then I <clears throat> took a job with the, the Student Conservation Association and went to Idaho and then Texas and then Hawaii. So that was three years worth of work there. Uh, working for SCA. And then I got a job with the Nature Conservancy um, in South Dakota, a seasonal job. Uh, so <clears throat> I worked there for two, two seasons and did prescribed fire uh, work for after that even. Um, and then I went to graduate school. So Started graduate school in 2009, so took some time off and, and did all that seasonal work and internships and and uh, so it, it it took a while, but I tried a bunch of different things, saw a lot of cool places and and met a lot of cool people and and figured out what I wanted to do. Yeah, um, so I did participate in research at Morris. And then also, while I was at Morris, I did apply and do research um, at other universities. So um, actually, the summer after my first year, I wasn't entirely sure what I was going to do. Um, and so I was fortunate to work um, with another uh, student Lyra Hefner and Mary Jo Forboard, um, who was a part of the, I believe it was called the Morris Healthy Eating Initiative at the time. Um, we worked um, in the Native American Community Garden, which um, kind of ha had a home um, with the organic garden. So we worked in that garden for that summer. And then I also worked um, with Mary Jo to kind of um, create a research project around that um, the Native American medicine wheel garden. So I was really kind of grateful to um, 
have that opportunity right from the start at my time at Morris. And that really, um, after that summer, I um, would then in future summers of uh, being an undergraduate undergraduate student, I would um, travel to Michigan State. I did a summer of research there. Um, I think research um, was really good in showing me what I did and did not like about research. So I, I felt like I learned different skills and techniques and I learned kind of how I, um, as a person, you know, jived with those techniques because, you know, I would later go on to graduate school and that's when you really become more specialized. So I did a summer of research at Michigan State um, where I worked in a toxicology lab. And then um, the research that I did right before I graduated, um, it was called a research experience uh, for undergraduate students. Um, it was through the University of Minnesota, the Twin Cities campus, but they partnered with um, Fond du Lac Tribal College um, in Northern Minnesota, and then also another tribal college in um, Montana, the Salish Kootenai. Tribal College. So I ended up going out to Montana for the summer um, and worked on a project around uh, blue camas, which is an important plant for the um, Salish Kootenai and Ponderé. Um, so I worked um, with a team of researchers um, trying to identify, you know, uh, spots within the um, tribal community out there that they would potentially like to reintroduce that plant to. Um, so that was really fun and exciting. And I learned a lot about um, sort of, you know, not only ecology, but I was doing more of the um, interviewing and talking with community members on how um, they used to gather camas and different techniques and, you know, where they used to, um, just stories associated with that plant, which really got me excited about, um, you know, working with communities alongside these sort of environmental ecological projects. Um, yeah. So. Um, like I had mentioned, I was interested in, um, environmental or well, it's environmental education stuff, um, but also sustainability. And I ha really didn't know going into college what exactly I wanted to do. Um, but that first, my first summer, in college, um, I was able to get an internship in Denver, actually, um, working for a PR agency. And I just did like environmental pro bono work. So they had different clients that were doing um, sustainability work. And so I got to do work for them and the company um, paid for it. So it was pro bono. But um, that was a great way to just see more of like the business side of sustainability. And then I also worked in the Office of Sustainability, I think all four years or close to that. Um, and I also worked as an event planner um, and I planned a sustainability conference when I was there. So um, that also gave me awesome experience into, um, well, for one, like networking and meeting all a, a ton of other students who were interested in sustainability, but also the um, experience of actual event planning um, which was good for my management degree too. Um, then I sort of went more into like the education world and um, the following summer I was a teacher assistant at a summer school program um, which kind of gave me an insight into the school world um, and also through my environmental studies major applied for I don't even remember now it was a grant I guess um, but was able to take a Knowles trip. Um, and so that's National Outdoor Leadership School. And it was an outdoor educator course. So it was a month long trip to Alaska, sea kayaking and backpacking. Um, and it was, I got it paid for through Morris somehow. Um, and yeah, it taught me about how to be an outdoor educator, um, but also obviously had an amazing experience. And then for the following two summers after that, I was a guide working at a summer camp um, outside of the Boundary Waters up the Gunflint Trail. So then I was the one taking kids out on um, canoeing trips and backpacking trips. And that was like an awesome experience doing the environmental education part with kids. 
Awesome. Thank you, guys. Katie, I have actually read so much of your stuff from like planning self-sustain. I just need to tell you that it's kind of cool to finally meet you. Um, yeah, I figured you were the one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's cool. Um, You're taking over. Yeah, yeah. All right. So our next question is, what did you do right after graduation? Um, did you attend graduate school or jump straight into a career? Um, and then what was your first career plan and job out of college? And how did you find these opportunities? So um, yeah, if you need me to repeat any of that, I definitely can. Um. Well, <clears throat> like I already mentioned, I, I took some time between my undergrad and graduate uh, degree. But, and I bounced around doing a bunch of different temp, you know, uh, temporary jobs and seasonal work. But uh, I found those. So pr professors pointed me uh, the, the, the first, the very first research position at Glacial Lakes was uh, one of my professors recommended I, and put me in touch with the researcher. And then was also recommended to was encouraged to apply for the Student Conservation Association as well, professors. So, yeah. <clears throat> That's, uh... Yeah, I think I answered that in most of my questions. Yeah. Um, so right after graduation, I um, went directly into grad school. Um, so did not take a break. Um, went right into a master's program at the University of Kansas in Indigenous Studies, um, where I worked with a restoration ecologist, or sorry, um, community, more of a community ecologist. Um, I mentioned earlier around the plant called OSHA or bear root. Um, so I did that for two years, and then um, I really liked the research that I was doing, and um, sort of the next step for me uh, was to get a PhD. So I ended up going, applying to PhD programs, um, but ended up at the University of Colorado Boulder, um, where I was doing a PhD in critical ethnic studies, um, but focused on environmental studies, and then also, you know, shifted my research focus to the Great Lakes. Um, let's see, did I, so yeah, I guess career plan, um, you know, as I was going through graduate school, it's a long time commitment and, um, I didn't actually start applying for jobs until, um, I think it was 2022 time is all sort of a blur, but so I just started my, my first job out of school, um, this past fall. So in that's something, you know, I did various sort of, you know, my own research in graduate school, but the job that I started um, was this past fall. Um, and then in terms of finding these opportunities, I really attribute sort of looking for academic jobs in particular with um, definitely being, you know, a part of like different listservs. Um, there's, you know, different higher education websites that'll post jobs. Um, but for me, I, I found that it was really helpful, um, you know, just to be connected within your network and, you know, to let people know that you're looking for a job. And um, I found that, you know, a lot of good opportunities were shared with me just through colleagues in my network. So, um, yeah, that was some of you know, how I navigated that that process. Uh, after graduation, I guided again that summer, and then in the fall, I biked across the country, bicycled, um, with some friends. So, did not work, um, but we did attach the bike trip to um a cause, and we were biking for to to raise awareness for public lands, um, and it was back when there was well, there still is, but. There was a huge threat to public lands at the time. Um, and so we were biking and visiting as many public lands across the country as we could, and then doing different um, conversations and video recordings to raise awareness. Um, but after that, then I moved to Idaho because that's 
where my husband, who was my husband, but that's where he was at the time. Um, and we both love to ski, which is why we were out there. Um, and so I got a job at the ski resort teaching kids how to ski. And um, <clears throat> then we did the, the summer, we called an internship with my grandpa here at the vineyard. Um, and so that was kind of our way to figure out if if we could sort of um, turn it into anything. Um, it wasn't like it wasn't an established winery when we started here. He, he was making wine and he had um, some grapes, but um, didn't have open hours to the public or anything. Um, so um, then we spent three years doing winters in Idaho and summers at the vineyard and just trying to make it work. Um, and we were really excited about the possibility of the of local wine and um, working together at the winery. So um, we did that until um, it's not very affordable to move across the country every six months. So um, we had to settle here. And then I got a job as a paraprofessional um, because I realized that, well, the business was really only open in the summer. And I realized that I missed working with kids and that was a big part of my life. Um, and the way I, I really would still love to do more environmental education stuff, but I realized that living um, in rural Minnesota, like the biggest way I could make an impact on kids was to be in the school system at this time. Um, and so I became a para and then quickly realized that same thing, my biggest impact would be in a school in um for two, with two more years of um, online school, I could get my teaching license. And so I did that. And then that's how I became the second grade teacher. And this is my first year as a teacher. Um, very cool, guys. Um, our next question is, what are you working on currently? Um, and if you could talk a little bit about your current position, what your day to day responsibilities are. Um, if you want to share what you like and dislike about your job. And then, yeah, we already kind of touched on how you ended up in your job. So, yeah, if you want to expand on that, you can. Yeah. Sure. So currently, I, like I said, I'm a goat wrangler. I bring my goats around to eat buckthorn. Um, well, and just to back up, so my farm, I've got a 217-acre farm and what sets us apart from other farmers is that I took well the whole everything that was tillable and that was previously before we got here was in corn and beans and wheat but we converted it back to uh, perennial pastures and native prairie based perennial pastures so we planted about 120 different native species and um and then we graze we graze cattle on that and now we're grazing cattle and goats <clears throat> so and then i'm been working hard to uh, restore the <clears throat> the wooded areas of our farm too to oak savanna because <clears throat> it was overgrown with buckthorn we have about 40 acres of was overgrown <clears throat> uh, uh, savanna, and um, so <clears throat> I'm currently I've been pre-approved for a sustainable ag demonstration grant through the um, Department of Ag, Minnesota Department of Ag, and yeah, so we're gonna we're looking at how <clears throat> now that the buckthorn is gone, I've removed the big stuff, and the goats are managing it. But trying to transition it to like right now it's overgrown with burdock and thistle and i'm trying to get it to uh, more of a native perennial perennials established so we're going to do some seeding and, and and then look at how to get the oaks to regenerate even under grazing pressure with the goats so yeah um what i like is that well it, it, so right after college, maybe I had the idea that I would uh, get a job with Fish and Wildlife or the DNR or something like that. But 
when push came to shove, I just couldn't stand working at a computer. And that's, there's a lot of that. And I, I wanted to be my own boss and I want to manage land, manage prairie, and, but not be stuck at a computer. Uh, yeah. um, so that's why farming really worked out well for me. So I can be my own boss, make the decisions, manage land. Um, yeah. Did I did I miss anything? <laughs> um, I think I think you answered it all. So okay. yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, so for me, what I'm working on currently, so being in the or having an academic job, um, there is expectations to publish. So I'm working currently on, um publishing one of the chapters for my dissertation that looks at different methods and approaches um, specifically from indigenous studies and how they are um, kind of tied to and in conversation with um, conservation approaches. So that's something that I'm currently working on right now is um, sort of re-editing um, and thinking about that particular chapter. Um, so yeah, like I shared, um, my current position is an assistant professor of Indigenous Environmental Studies at Ohio State. So I'm actually located in um, Columbus, Ohio. Um, so I just started this position in the fall. Um, so truly, um, I'm still learning a lot about, you know, the position in general, being a part of um, an academic institution from the other side, now being a faculty member, um, after being a graduate student for so long. So there are different sort of, um, you know, things that I've been learning uh, to that end. But, you know, really um, some of my, you know, responsibilities with this position um, is that I'm creating um, Indigenous Environmental Studies courses for the school. So I'm a, I'm a part of the School of Environment and Natural Resources. And um, before this position, they didn't have any courses around Indigenous Environmental Studies. Um, and the students here at Ohio State have really expressed the need for that sort of um, courses and wanting to learn more about indigenous approaches to the environment. Um, so that's you know part of the responsibilities of my position in, a, in addition to keeping a research program. Um, and you know, uh, in terms of that, I'm continuing um, the work that I do in the Great Lakes. Uh, currently, I work with the Little River Band of Ottawa Indians in Manistee, Michigan, on their Lake Sturgeon Restoration Program. Um, so right now, um, we're really just in a brainstorming stage. Um, having completed a, a dissertation just last um, July, it kind of comes like, it feels like in a lot of ways that I'm, I'm coming up for air um, after kind of, you know, completing that big big paper. Um, so right now we're just brainstorming um, me and the tribal natural resource department on what our possible next steps might be. Um, something that we've done in the fall is, you know, I've shared interview transcripts with them that I did um, with tribal members. And um, hopefully this spring we'll talk about, you know, what were some of the main themes that we were seeing from these transcripts and what might, um, you know, be uh, some follow-up research that's needed. And so I, I'm really trying to approach this, um, you know, with the lens of, you know, what will work best for um, the Tribal Natural Resource Department, ensuring that they, um, their concerns and sort of what they're wanting to do is, is met. Um, so um, what I like about my job is that, you know, there is a lot of, um, freedom and self-direction in terms of the work that you do. So, you know, I'm in charge of my own research. I can kind of um, decide what trajectory I wanna go to. Um, you know, I have um, the opportunity to think and um, sort of continue with some of the literature that I've been reading in graduate school. So just having that space to really um, delve deeper into some of the ideas and um, concepts that um, I was reading as a graduate student is really, um, really nice. Um, I will say that, you know, with that freedom, I can sort of, you know, plan 
follow-up research or, you know, however I want to just further that research agenda, there is that opportunity there for me to do so. Um, you know, and there also is, um, you know, opportunities for teaching, which I really enjoy. And so I'm co-teaching a class this semester um, called Local Peoples and International Conservation. So it's been really fun to get in the classroom and um, talk with students and kind of get a sense of what they're interested in. So I really like that part of the job. Um, and yeah, teaching is something that um, I'm excited about continuing. Um, I wouldn't say I dislike this part of the job. I think it's just it's just a part of the job. Um, you know, spending a lot of time in front of a computer is definitely something that, you know, I can find myself doing from any given any given day, um, especially um, you know, if you're teaching or you have meetings. So I will say that there is a lot of time that can be spent in front of a screen, um, depending on, you know, what you're doing at that particular point in the semester. So I think for me, it's important to just make sure I'm always like getting outside and kind of making sure I'm like up and moving around and, you know, that sort of thing. So that is, can, can be a bummer for sure. Well, a uh, big part of my day to day, especially during the school year, is being the teacher. Um, and I do want to touch on that is that the vineyard winery is obviously our connection to food systems and um, more sustainability stuff. But um, we've been here six years working at this is our sixth year working at the winery. And I realize it seems more like we're in a bit of a unique situation, especially because we took over um, or bought bought it from my grandpa. Um, but I, I do think it would be similar to um, maybe just starting a small farm or, or maybe purchasing one or working under somebody who had one, um, just because it wasn't profitable when we started. Um, and we really grew it from, um, I mean, there was a product and some fruit, um, but we really grew the business part and we still are, which is the reason that both my husband and I are working full-time other jobs. Um, so he's a carpenter full-time and then I'm a teacher. So um, it's really, I, <laughs> it's like our passion and we hopefully won't be working three jobs our whole lives because that's not sustainable. Um, speaking of sustainability, but um, we're trying to, we're sort of finding the groove. Um, it's nice. It worked. The re One of the big reasons I became a teacher was because I knew I would have summers off um, to do the winery. And so just wanted to touch on that, that it's not all like <laughs> um, flowers and roses. Um, it's a lot of hard work to start a small business and um, especially a farm. Um, land is expensive and just all the parts that go with that. So Wanted to make sure I touched on that, but um, at the winery, uh, m my husband and I do everything. Um, so we grow the grapes, make the wine. Um, we also sell the grapes and then, or sell the wine, bartend. Um, and then we also do wood fired pizza nights. And that's honestly been our biggest sell since we got here. Um, we started doing that. We do a sourdough crust. Um, and that's draws every, we've done it Friday nights for the last, um, four years and we've drawn in a crowd of 200 people every Friday. And that's like our biggest, um, thing we do. And so this summer we are growing a little bit. And so we're doing more pizza nights and hopefully we'll be successful in that. But, um, we also make the pizza. So we literally do everything there is to do. Um, we hire a couple of people to help us with sales um and my grandpa we actually just bought him out completely so we're 100 percent owners but he's still around all the time he was out pruning grapes today so he's been a great resource for us and um well it's just awesome to work with two generations above you and family and get to know that um but what else was i gonna say I mean, I also do, I mean, I do everything, social media, the marketing. Um, but one of the big things about our vineyard is that, and and the big draw for us was that we're on 95 acres of land here. And it's um, 
it was CRP and so it's restored native prairie. Um, we've got ponds here. And so a big draw to me for the local, I mean, we're making a local food product, um, but we're also connecting people to the land. So people come out here, there's, we have three miles of hiking trails. They can take hikes and we do, um, we have this wagon ride. We can take people on tours and um, <clears throat> just love to connect people with the land, teach them about the native prairie, what it used to be like here. Um, talk about how cool it is that we can grow these hybridized grape varieties here now and people can drink local wine um, because obviously the more people are buying wine from here versus California, France, Italy, um, does have a huge impact. So those are, those are some of the coolest parts for me, um, about my job is just really connecting people to the land and to this local food and, and, um, helping them realize that they can make an impact and, um, people love just sitting out here. So I think that's the coolest part for me. Awesome. Thank you guys. Um, so we have one more question um, and then hopefully we'll have a few minutes for Q&A. Um, so our last question is, is there anything you would um, tell your college self if you could go back in time or do you have any advice for current students um, interested in sustainability careers? Sure. So I, I really appreciate my my time at Morris looking back because so I, my under uh, my my graduate degree was at South Dakota State, and hands down the academic rigor at Morris was way higher, <laughs> and I'm much more proud or I'm much more proud of of my grades in Morris, even though they were not as good as as the, my grades at, at South Dakota State. So, um, yeah, so it may be hard, but it, you're getting a lot out of it. So, yeah. Um, and there's there's a lot of different paths to, to, that life can take you down and uh, be willing to try new things. And if it's not something you're interested in, it's okay. You can just try something else because there's a lot of there's a lot of things out there, a lot of who knows where you'll end up, but just keep an open mind and anything is possible. Yeah, I would just sort of add to that, um, just in terms of, you know, what I might share with students at Morris um, is just to try to, you know, take advantage of opportunities, you know, presented to you at Morris related to sustainability. Um, I think, you know, while I was a student there, um, I felt like sustainability isn't it didn't really ever need to be said. It's just something that we did as students, like, you know, being surrounded um, by the biomass gasification plant or the wind turbines, um, helping, you know, starting a composting um, program, have to give a shout out to Alicia Beatty, who just kind of spearheaded that. You know, there's just things that like I was around at Morris, um, you know, that I felt like, you know, sustainability, wasn't something that we had to say. It was just something that we did, right? So I think that, you know, students at Morris are really lucky to have um, so much, like so many good opportunities to engage with sustainability at a, at a variety of different levels, just um, right in front of them. And I think, you know, that's a really great um, feature of Morris. And, um, you know, to that end, I would just share with students who are thinking about either careers in sustainability or thinking about that as like even like specializing within the major, you know, just to make as many connections as you can. I find that your networks are super important, um, both within and without, you know, outside of Morris. So, you know, if you do a research program at Morris, you know, maybe consider doing one outside of Morris somewhere else to, you, you know, to kind of grow those networks, because those can be really important when you're thinking about jobs. Um, and thinking about, you know, starting your career or even considering graduate school. I agree with both what Natasha and Brian said, but again, just like taking advantage of everything you can while you're in school. 
Um, there was so many great opportunities when I was at Morris. I'm sure there still are. Um, but just, yeah, really connecting with different people, trying different things. Um, I feel like just in college was your time to try. I remember I was like a three seasons athlete in high school and I thought I was going to play sports and at Morris too. And then I got there and I was like, I don't want to do that. Um, which opened up tons of different doors for me to do other things. So like I said, I joined the organic gardening club, um, and met a bunch of people through that. And I did student government, tons of different stuff that I had never done before. Um, <clears throat> working at the Office of Sustainability, just all different stuff that led me to meeting new people and networking and different opportunities. But even the town of Morris is great. Um, there's community members you can meet, um, just trying new things and um, yeah. But the other thing I would say is um, now as an adult, um, seeing my friends and um, the jobs that they have, it's just like, if you have a degree from college, um, you can really still do whatever you want. Like there's no one putting you in a box. Even if you did a certain internship in college, that doesn't mean that's what you have to do out of school. Um, I've just seen so many different people do different things. And really all you need is um, a drive to want to try something else. Um, because I know there's just so many people out there who will help make that happen. So just try something. And if it doesn't work, I think Brian said that too. You can, you can do something else. Um, so yeah, don't get down on it, but yeah. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for sharing your stories and your advice with us. I know I, this has been super helpful for me personally. And yeah, I know other students too have really appreciated it. Um, we have about 10 minutes left um, for a little Q&A. So students, if you guys have any questions, um, you can either go ahead and unmute or you can type in the chat. Um, so yeah, we'll open it up to whoever wants to ask something. Well, I have a question for Katie. What's the name of your vineyard? Good question. We're called Burr Vineyards, B-U-R-R. -R. So yeah, you, you can stop by, Brian. Yeah, I'd like to check that out, yeah. This is Sid, I'm not a current student, I'm also an alum, but I do have a question and I hope it's a fun one. Um, I think of college in Morris as being a silly little place where you can learn about what you wanna do in the world, but also just be a silly little person. Do you have any favorite memories of being on campus that really don't relate to schoolwork or to maybe your clubs, but are just like that helped define my joy and zest for life. I'd be curious about what those are. First thing that popped into my mind was so the the new science building. Well, it's been a while now, but was being built when I when I was a freshman. It was so we were the first ones in the new science building, and it was under construction, and we got into the tunnels on under they go between buildings and we're just kind of running around exploring things because we got in through a door in the science building and just kind of going on adventures and nobody we weren't supposed to be there but we we did it anyway um, <laughs> yeah. yeah i think for me um you know katie mentioned a lot of you know great people in the Morris community. So something that I found like really fun um, for me um, that I did while I was at Morris was I actually volunteered at the Morris um, Humane Society. Um, so at the time it was run out of, um, um, Karen White had like a property where, you know, we had a shelter for cats and dogs. And so going out there um, to take care of the animals like every week was super fun and I got to know a lot of the Morris community, you know, that was not necessarily affiliated with the university. Um, so there was also like a lot of just like fun memories, like, you know, interacting with all like the barn cats and, you know, chasing dogs that ran away or just, you know, like getting to know like all the different animals. And, um, you know, there's quite a few memories of like 
the car that I used to have getting stuck in like driveways in the winter because you just couldn't really navigate. I couldn't navigate my car. I didn't have all wheel drive. So it was just kind of like fun stuff, you know, like I feel like a lot of the fun memories that, you know, immediately came to my mind had to do with like snowstorms and being able to get out of Morris. Um, so yeah, I would say that was that was really fun and non academic or university related. <laughs> Yeah, I think Morris was awesome because it was a small town and a small school and um, there were things to do, but also we had to make the fun things to do. So um, some of my favorite memories were, uh, well, just like playing Frisbee on the on the uh, mall, like getting random people together just to pick up game or um there was so many dances. I feel like that's like a distant memory of the past, but I don't know if they still have so many, but it, there was always just so many fun things to do. And I, I feel like everyone rallied around the fun things, um, which was awesome. So same with like off campus. I remember when I was there, there was um, the food co-op had like a hangout area because they were trying to get more people to go there. And so there was always fun nights there. And yeah, just, it was awesome because I think the small community just made people um, come up with more fun things to do. Sid threw some, had some fun times that I remember she had a spaghetti dinner that I won't forget. Thank you for honoring the spaghetti in this, in this question. I appreciate it. <laughs> I've heard your spaghetti stories, Sid. Um, yeah. But very cool. It's super cool to hear about all your experiences. Snowstorms and dances are still happening. Um, not as many snowstorms this year, but um, yeah. Any any more questions from our students or? Um, I have one. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this is more for uh Natasha and Brian who went to grad school. Did you um? know going into uh undergrad that you wanted to get a graduate degree or is that something you kind of figured out along the way I'm a first year and I'm just kind of iffy about the idea of um going to graduate school yeah so when I first my first year I did not think so but at by year four finally the classes were like really interesting and I was like ah now it's done that's it like I just got a taste of like the the in-depth the, the good classes and then college ended and I was like well I know I'm gonna go back because I I want more of this so yeah <clears throat> yeah and I also didn't didn't know um that I would be going to graduate school when I first got to Morris. I felt like I came in um, as a first year, like declared as a, I was on like the pre-professional route. So I was, was even, I was actually considering like medical school. So like, even to say that I was like, wow, that was, I was a completely different person back then. And just, so I did change my mind. Um, and I think, you know, probably wasn't until I was, you know, far into my junior year, maybe beginning of my senior year that I started applying to graduate schools. And one one way that I went about it was um, I applied to both master's and PhD programs. So, you know, that's something to consider, like if you're not, um, you know, sold on getting a PhD, you know, maybe try out a master's program and it's not as much of a time commitment. Um, so I did it that way. I got a master's first and then I went on to a PhD and I found that to be helpful because I, I got an introduction into graduate school and then I was like, oh, okay, I, I like this. Like I want to continue on for a PhD. And I did, I, I'll be graduating with my master's this spring. So I did go back to get my teaching license and master's in teaching, um, but it was five, six years later. Um, and I did not want to go to grad school, but you figure out your life brings you down a different path and then you can always go back. 
Very cool. Thank you, guys. Um, we maybe have time for one more question if anyone has anything right now. Well, if there are no questions, um, yeah, I just wanted to say thank you guys one more time. We really appreciate you being here and sharing everything with us. So yeah, let's let's give our um panelists a round of applause real quick if you wanna clap or yeah. I think there's like a little react thing. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for being here. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you. Thanks.